We all know T to the M to the IDD comes with all different types of videos on the channel. And if you've been around my channel for some time now, you already know that I am a NASA engineer. And with that comes a lot of tech. You can see we have the drones, we have the cameras in the back, we have lighting, we have everything. But with this particular video, I wanted to switch it up a little bit. And so it will go a little tech technical, a little fun because we are all about the fun. But this video I wanted to focus on building my own camera. Now this is going to be pretty interesting because I have several pieces to it. So let's go ahead and get into these new components that I have for this video here. First things first, the main communication system for this camera that we are going to put together, we are going to do it, is this Raspberry Pi that you see here. This is going to be the main communication uh, where I code everything and I'm able to set up the camera to even get the nice images that we want. So along with this, to do the main coding, um, I will attach it to a separate monitor um, just your typical monitor like you see right behind me I'll plug this up to that type of monitor so that I can see the command line prompt and actually code this Raspberry Pi that is going to get coded to this high quality camera module okay and so once I write the code for those two to communicate, this is a 12.3 megapixel camera sens sensor. The original one that I had on here, five megapixels. So that is a huge jump, especially for this type of uh, software. And um, the, the, his, ironically, Sony makes the sensor for this. So Sony is everywhere, <laughs> as you can see, okay? now. Once I'm in the field, if I want to take it outdoors, things like that, then I have this mobile screen that I can set it up because I don't want to take a big monitor like that outside, right? Because that's just a lot. But what I can do is I can uh, code the microcontroller to communicate with this screen and then everything I need to see, I can see on this seven inch screen, right? Okay. Once we do that, we need an operating system, right? So Raspberry Pi has all different types of uh, Linux-based operating systems, but the operating system, ironically, is all held on what we use in our cameras today, the micro SD car. So I have a 64 gigabyte, the OS isn't even that much, but I always give myself enough room to do whatever I need to do. But the first step is going to be uh, putting the operating system on to this micro SD from my main PC. Once we get that from the main PC, uh, then I could take this micro SD and put it into the actual microcontroller, right? Now, once, once I do that, I will get into the coding. And when I code, I use Python. If you are familiar with Python, if you are not, take a look at what Python is. It is a nice scripting language. Now, for a real detailed technical video, let me know in the comments below. I will go through all the technical. I will show you me writing the code. I will show you every little detail to get the code running and the camera working. Uh, but for this video, I will not go into that much much detail. If you do want to see that, let me know in the comments below. But for here, I'll kind of give you a, a quick snapshot of me doing the code, me getting the operating system and all that good stuff. But then we're going to go to what we want to see is the nice 
portraits that we can get with this camera setup. Now, the last thing that I'm going to add to that is, and the reason why I wanted to set this up is modularity. I can now interchange lenses because I have this new high quality 12.3 megapixel adapter. At first, you can see here that this, this is what you get, five megapixel camera. I cannot adapt it, I cannot change the lens, but now here, I went and I got this 35 millimeter 1.6 prime lens. So this is what we are going to be uh, shooting with. So all of that is going to come together and that is going to be the camera that we use to get the shots. Now notice I don't have any type of body to get a steady shot or anything like that. So if on the bottom here, we have a quarter uh, 20 thread. Let's see, okay. And so what I'll end up doing is I'll end up putting this onto a tripod and then getting my shots like that. So that is what we're going to do. Let's head on over to my main PC and get the operating system onto the micro flash and let's get this project going. Now we have this card formatted for the Raspberry Pi operating system, 32-bit. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and place that into the Pi like so. So now that is in the back of the Pi right there. All right. And this is the old camera right here, so I'm just gonna pull up this lever and take the old camera out just like that because we're going to eventually place the new one in there which is the 12.3 megapixel Okay. Now, let's see. So now what I'm going to do is try to go back to the terminal and I'm going to try that same, uh, same function. So, the good thing is, once you have something ran, you can press the up arrow and get back to it. So now let's try up. Oh, there we have it. And this is a live feed straight from the camera. So um, mind you, we have the 35 mil. So let's see, I'm going to point this. That is, that is the Mac that we are looking at. So let's open up the aperture okay and then remember i said this is manual focus so let's try to get this in focus okay looks like we're getting closer okay so right about there all right so we have everything set up you can see that once I move this module over here, that it is indeed connected. So I'm excited about that. Um, now I want to test this with a model. So we're gonna get a model and get some shots. Uh, this pretty much covers the technical side. Like, like I said, if you want to know more in depth, like how I went into getting everything to work together, then let me know in the comments below and I can make a video on that. But now let's go ahead, go to the studio, get a model, get some shots with this 35 millimeter and let's see what we get.
Hey, what is going on? We are back. We built the actual camera. Now it is time to test it. Now, once again, I have my niece helping me with this video again, because we're just going to get a few quick shots so that we can see what this camera is actually capable of doing. So quick setup. I have a continuous light in about a 20 inch softbox gridded um, coming from camera right and then I'm actually going to be using this makeshift setup in home. Of course if I wanted to use this particular setup right here I would have to make it more mobile so I would probably use my field world uh, screen and then still use this power supply probably a more mobile keyboard and you can see the mouse is mobile already. So that is the setup that we have right here. And then you'll see the shots that we actually get. Let's go. Right now we have everything loading and we are about to get the viewer, the viewer up so that we can focus this shot now everything i'm going to go to this terminal and then i can just do an up arrow because i already tried it before so i saved it in memory but before i do that i'm going to start this terminal and we have this image here so now we have this shot we need to adjust the lens because it's getting her leg right now but we want to get her actual face. So let's adjust that. The thing is, is that this is a 35 millimeter lens, but there is a 5.5 crop on this. So I almost have a 200 mil lens here. So we are going to go for a head shot, but you can see what we have on the screen. And what I'm going to do is focus this just a little bit. All right, I think somewhere in about there is where we want it. Okay, so that's going to be perfect. And I have the aperture at 2.8 right now. So I'm going to open it up just a little bit, let a little bit more light in. Okay. And that is at about F2. So now we are going to take a couple shots. So what I want you to do is go ahead right there. Give me a smile. Put your chin up. Perfect. And one, two. And hold it right there. Okay. And we're going to take, we're going to take another one. All right, and one, two, hold it right there. Oh, I think you blink right there. All right, so we're gonna take another one. Turn your, turn your head straight, boom, tilt it. Yeah, put your chin up, bring it. All right, and hold it right there, one, two, we finally made it through this project. This has been a pretty interesting and fun project. And I hope you learned something from this project and you got a little bit of insight on what I actually like doing and how I was able to integrate the technical aspect with the photography piece just to see what it was capable of doing. Now, that is one takeaway I wanted you to get from this, but also, you will see this again in something that is more adaptive to the current situation that I am uh, using with my Nikon camera because I want to test it in the field in another situation, but with a Nikon lens. So look forward to that because I think that's going to be something that's even more critical and interesting to see how we have this nice microcontroller being adapted with a Nikon lens. So look for that in the future because that will be coming. But for now, 
we were able to get this nice image with this computer and this lens. The takeaways from this were that we had the coding piece. And so the coding piece had to do a little bit of uh, research and um, getting things installed and, and fixing code to grab files. And so you were able to see just kind of like a snap uh, shot of the coding piece. But as I said, if you want a more in depth, then let me know in the comments below and I can share more information with how I was able to get everything to work together. Now, the final image was a JPEG plus a RAW. And so the code had to take the JPEG piece and t basically cut it off. And then <clears throat> what you are left with is the raw data. But then you have to do like some matrix manipulation to uh, get a DNG file. And so that is why the coding piece is necessary for this particular application. And I was using Python, so I was able to get the image uh, rendered. Now I did see the original file, if I just do JPEG, was about five megabytes. And then the raw file was about 23 megabytes. So you could definitely see that it had a lot more data. And for what this is, the image isn't bad. 12.3 megapixels, it's not bad, but you know I'm used to my 45 on a Nikon, so it, it is what it is. But I will say that this does have other applications, like I said, a lot of artificial intelligence applications and just things for monitoring homes, but you also can use it servo motors, things like that. So the it, it's endless amounts of applications that you can uh, get with this right here. So if you haven't heard of the Raspberry Pi or even the Jetson, it's a Jetson Nano also, look into it, you, you never know. if 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 you are spontaneous, you want to learn something new, coding, you know, is taking over the world right now. If we date it back to uh, current times, artificial intelligence is what allows us to get our eye autofocus. And that's why I wanted to dabble into this a little bit because you can definitely go that route. So I hope you enjoyed the technical aspect and uh, enjoyed this type of video from me, something different definitely, and you learned something from it. So until the next video, T to the M to the IDD, peace.